So uh, just recently on my channel, I covered a disagreement between Ryan Garcia and Jerron Ennis. And uh, it was seeming as though maybe it would happen next, right? You get Ryan Garcia saying, I can knock out Boots. Boots saying, all right, what it is, what it is. Let's do it next, right? And so that was kind of a, a, a cooler idea for me, <clears throat> excuse me, because I was looking at it like, all right, Ryan got the height, he got the arm reach, he got speed in his fist. And he got a banging left hook, right? Um, which happens to be the punch that was really working for Kyron in his fight with Boots, right? He was really just swinging that left hook and it was landing at a significant amount of pace. Not as fast as Ryan could get that left hook in on Jerron's chin, but it just, it is what it is, right? I do think that uh, Ryan has more speed than Kyron, although I do give Kyron the more power advantage over Ryan Garcia. Some of y'all say I'm tripping with that. But, bro, I just feel like y'all giving Ryan Garcia a little too much credit for the Devin Haney thing. That's just my opinion because y'all wouldn't even be talking like that when it came to Tank Davis or any other fighter. It's just he he had a good night with Devin and now all of a sudden he's Superman. I, I don't know. I don't get it, bro. It's just my opinion. You can take that with a grain of salt. Saying that to say, I still want to see the fight between Ryan and Boots, bro. But I thought it was more so a potential thing, right? It's something that could possibly happen. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, this ain't never going to happen. Ryan just running his mouth. And Boots not going to step into the ring with Ryan Garcia, bruh. Eddie Hearn teases his potential match room versus Golden Boy 5v5 lineup, fam. Now, I got the lineup here, but we're just going to see it with the writing first. And I'm going to show you guys how I look on the screen, right? So, you got Boots versus Ryan Garcia, which is the fight that we were talking about, right? Shakur Stevenson versus Will Zapata. Israel Madrima versus uh, Virgil Ortiz. Jao Patel versus Zerto Ramirez. Jack Catterall versus uh, Jose Ramirez. And the craziest thing, right, was um, Oscar De La Hoya was stating that he would like to also be a part of this fight card, bruh, and have Oscar De La Hoya versus Eddie Hearn as the main event of this evening, if it could go down, right? Now, I know that's pretty much far-fetched, but shout out to Oscar De La Hoya for that idea because I would love to see T, uh, TMT take on Golden Boy and we get to see uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. taking on Oscar De La Hoya too at this at this stage of their life and see who won it like that. But it is what it is. Sound that to say, fam. It is, man. It is. This kind of nice, bro. This this a nice little. I ain't going to hold you, bro. This is a nice little card, bro, because you get Shakur Stevens and Williams Zapata, which is one that Oscar De La Hoya had been teasing for a while. Now, we know Shakur was over at top rank. Uh, for Shakur to have his breakout fight at Matchroom Boxing with Williams Zapata, bro, that's that's make or break, dog. If y'all think about um, um, Regis Progress, bro, he get that first fight with Zorilla, right? It wasn't the best fight, but at least he got a W, right? And then shortly after that, he lose to, to Devin Haney, and now he just lost again to Jack Catterall. Like, you see what I'm saying? So, his little match room boxing, like his breakout wasn't that good. You think about Subria Matias, his first damn fight over on match room boxing, he lost. You know, Boots just won his first win. Uh, Terrence Crawford won his first one. We ain't seen Shakur Stevenson yet. Even Devin Haney won his first because his first one was with uh, uh, Regis Pro Grayers, right? So we ain't seen Shakur Stevenson yet. So I think that's a legit little, you know what I'm saying? Will Zapata, because, man, Zapata beat Shakur Stevenson, bro. That, that, he got to still go through the rest of that contract with that L on his head. Like, you dig what I'm saying? So it just it is what it is. And that one, then you got, bro, this one's so crazy, fam. Virgil Ortiz, Israel Madrimov? Bro, that's a crazy fight, bro. Man, if y'all have not seen Israel Madrimov get down, bro, do yourself a favor, fam. Go watch a highlight film. You ain't even got to watch him in the ring, bro. Just go watch a highlight film and then come back and tell me I'm wrong. That dude is lit, fam. And I wonder, right, because here's the thing about Virgil Ortiz. I actually like Virgil Ortiz. I just I question to a certain degree, has he seen... Uh, just the amount of talented guys in the ring as him, right? Um, when I seen him in the ring with Serhi Boachunk, who is is a guy who can crack just as well as Virgil can crack, he was floored twice, right? I haven't seen him in the ring with a pure boxer, but he does bring a lot of power to the ring. I think that to put him in the ring with Israel Madrima, that's a guy I don't think he can stop. 
and also a guy who I think who can outbox him. But bruh, I also think that Virgil Ortiz can box. So it would be nice to see him actually have to use his boxing ability because that's really what wanted for him, in my opinion, versus Sergey Borchunk. He actually pulled that little rabbit out of a hat that we didn't know he had because we thought he was just a come forward fighter the whole time. And really, he got a little boxing skills. He can move his feet as well. Then you got Zerto Ramirez versus Jao Patea. Now, here's the thing about this fight, bro. Zerto Ramirez goes 40-0 at 175 pounds in the light heavyweight division. And then he's seen Dimitri Bivar. All right, when he's seen Dimitri Bivar, he went for the WBA championship goal. He loses now to a certain degree. I can't really look at Zerto's uh, resume and say that he's fought anybody well worth it, right? He went 40-0, and 0, and we don't even know any of the guys that he actually beat, right? So maybe that's just like a Oscar De La Hoya smoking mirror, right? But he going up to the cruiserweight division to see Ja Opatea? Oh, he going to have to bring it, bro, because Ja Opatea, in my honest opinion, bro, is the best guy at cruiserweight. And I'm I'm one of those guys who banking to see Ja Opatea take on uh, Art to better be right. That's the fight I really want to see. Or Ja Opatea go up to heavyweight and take on maybe Joseph Parker, or maybe take on uh, uh, a Daniel Dubois, or maybe take on an Anthony Joshua, or maybe even take on an Alexander Usyk type deal. Because we heard what he did to Tyson Fury and training, like you did. What I'm saying. Then you got Jack Catterall and Jose Ramirez. Now I don't really know much about Jose Ramirez. I ain't gonna hold you guys. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you on Jack Catterall either, bro. Cause to a certain degree, I wasn't really intrigued by what Jack did versus Regis Progress. I feel like he ran, and there's a difference between boxing and running. And I feel like what Jack Catterall did, although he still get the win by close, what he did was he ran majority of the night. So I, I feel like if you really were to ask me, even if I were to see who Jose Ramirez is, which Trust me, bro. If this fight card goes down, fam, I'm definitely going to go check him out, bro. Because I already seen him like a couple of times. I think the one I seen him with was uh, Jamel Heron, if I'm not mistaken. That's like the only one I seen him in. Uh, I think that was like for unification, if I'm not mistaken. But other than that, though, bro, um, I don't really know much about the guy. But even if I did, I don't think that the Jack Catterall versus uh, Ramirez fight would really just be that that one for me. Like I'd rather this be the first one, if you ask me. Um, then you get uh, Ryan Garcia versus Jerron Ennis. I did a whole video on it, so it's no reason to talk about it in here, right? I think it's a good fight. If we were to make it happen, I'm just gonna say this: If Ryan's trying to get in the ring with Jerron, he better get his defense right, cause he can't be he can't be balling up like he did with Devin Haney and giving uh, Jerron his ribs the way he did with Devin. The difference between Devin and uh, Jerron is Jerron can actually crack, Devin can't. That's just my honest opinion about that. Then you got uh, Oscar De La Hoya. And uh, Eddie Hearn, if it were to go down that way, highly doubtful. But I'm pretty sure they're going to have a big bet on it. Like uh, what happened with Eddie Hearn and um, Frank Warner had a nice big bet on it. So maybe that's, that's probably where they're going to go with it. Uh, it would be cool, though. I ain't going to hold it. It would be cool if Eddie Hearn and Oscar De La Hoya did get in the ring and kind of duke it out. At least for about two or three rounds, four rounds. That would be cool. I think Oscar might knock him out. But I think a lot of people in the sport of boxing would just love to see Oscar De La Hoya knock out Eddie Hearn because a lot of people don't like Eddie Hearn. So it's hit or miss, but I'm with it if it happened, right? But here is the fight card, man. 5v5, as stated. It's just an idea. It's just a teaser idea. But, bro, man, I ain't going to hold y'all. I want to see it, bro. If this could go down in uh, 2025, maybe around summertime, bro, to give everybody an opportunity to get their contracts in order and stuff like that, bro. I'm with it, bro. Even around spring. If we, if, if we can happen around springtime, I'm with it, too. A little earlier than summer, like around the springtime, bro. I'm with this fight, bro. I don't know what card. I, I do got the card I think going to win. I do got the side I think going to win this 5v5. But I'm going to keep that to myself, bro, just so we can kind of relish in the idea, bro, because this is a lit idea. Hopefully, PBC can start playing ball, bro. Dang, I wish PBC would play ball with all of the other companies, bro, because, man, PBC got a nice little squad, bro. Tank Davis, Errol Spence Jr., the Charlo Twins. They got David Benavidez, Caleb Plant over there, bro. That's a nice little old squad over there that we can get to actually become a part of these 5v5 kind of competitions, especially if Oscar De La Hoya and Eddie Hearn does it next. But this is Fist Factory, man. I'm your host, Neff, and I'm signing out. You leave in your comment section who you got winning, what fights. That's kind of cool. Y'all can bounce however many ideas you need to bounce 
in this particular video. I'll check you guys out in the comment section below. Again, Fist Factory, your host, Neff. I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace.